In this video, we're going to list out the generations of Pokemon. And while doing so, we're going to learn about each blocks and how to work with objects in Svelte. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with our code from last time. And let's go ahead and add multiple variables. So, so add a greeting variable, which is, uh, let's say, hello, and we can put it here. Good, that changes. And then for our hello, we'll say, uh, this would be the name. So greeting to name, fantastic, hello to world. Uh, but sometimes we want to group these together in objects. So we'll say greeting object. And here the greeting is hello and the name is world. So it's the same information as here, but it's in one object. It can be passed along together. Uh, it's grouped together nicely. And we can access that in the template just using a dot here. There we go. Nothing changes because this is working just as it was before. All right, fantastic. Nothing really surprising here. Next, we're going to go over loops and arrays. So let's go ahead and do a data array. And we'll put in, let's say, for example, yellow and red and blue. You know, just three randomly chosen colors. So let's go ahead and use the each block to loop through all of these colors. And so what we're doing here is uh, the blocks start off with a pound symbol and then the name of the block. And then we have the array that we're feeding into the each block. And then we say as, and this is the name that we use for each individual item in here. So we can use color like this and it just says yellow, then red, then blue. We could put, say, a comma here. It adds the comma after each one. More likely, we're going to want to put in a div like that. You can also get the index. And here we go. So it just counts up from 0. And you can do uh, simple JavaScript expressions in these curly braces. And uh, so you can get the item, you can get the index, you can also set the key. The key is in a bit of an advanced subject compared to the rest of the video. So we'll just do a super basic overview. So you can set it in parentheses after either just the object or the object and the index. And it needs to be unique. And so uh, if we had a second red in here, that wouldn't work. It's actually throwing an error. So it needs to be unique. And a lot of times uh, you'll have an ID that does that or combine different things. All right, so you have the key and what's it doing? You can't see anything happening here. But what it does is it helps felt keep track of the different uh, rows in this each and it prevents some common issues. So it's never a bad thing to have a key, presuming you have a unique identifier. Uh, we currently do not. Uh, but once we have an ID, use the key with it every time. So now let's combine all this knowledge in order to loop through the Pokemon generations. So first let's go ahead and rename this from hello to generations. Then let's go ahead and paste in our generations data. So we have a type of generation. We can see we have an ID that is a number. We have a name that is a string. We have uh, games that is an array of strings and then a main region that is a string. And optionally, we have an array of Pokemon species. All right, and so then we have the generations array. And if you're just using JavaScript, the only thing that'll change is you remove this type annotation and the type. And here it has all the data for the different generations. So let's go ahead and clear out what we have here and get the generations in there. So we're going to import the generations and 
Then we're going to loop through them. So each generation's as generation. Then we'll go ahead and display the name. Then we'll do the main region, which uh, be in generation dot main region. Excellent. And we'll also go ahead and do the games. And here we're doing something a little bit different. So we'll do generation dot games. And we could do that. Uh, oh, that's nice. It automatically joins it with a comma. However, we do want a space as well. And so we'll join it manually and do a comma and then a space. All right, excellent. To finish this out, we'll go ahead and put in the key, which is the generation.id. And that is how we use arrays and objects in a SvelteKit template. In the next episode, we're going to learn how to load data from the Poke API and therefore display all the Pokemon. And then in the episode after that, we're going to make this display a lot nicer, both this and the Pokemon that we loaded. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.